Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal and today we're going to be talking about Diablo 4 quarterly update for August 2022 that was released yesterday by Blizzard. Keep in mind here they talk about some of the design choices of the game but the main point of this video and about this blog as well is the monetization options and monetization we can expect in the title itself. Because Diablo 4 is labeled as a live service title, keep in mind this also means that you can have everything you would expect from those kind of titles meaning battle passes shops and cosmetics and all of that which we kind of got used to when it comes to blizzard overall ever since from world of warcraft stored into that abysmal diablo immortal which is the definition of a predatory game itself and because of all of the things that have been happening with that people were very worried about diablo 4 including me obviously but in this blog post there are some good things, there are some bad things which I want to talk about, but if anything they go into detail of what to expect and what not to expect at least according to them. We don't know if these things are going to change once the game comes out because it wouldn't be the first time that Blizzard said something and then in the end once it releases it has all of the things which they did not want to include. So let's get into the blog itself. So first things first, let's talk about seasons themselves, and this is what they say. Many of you have enjoyed the seasons in Diablo 2 Resurrected and Diablo 3, and have asked for more extensive season support. Yeah, it was okay. We agree on one of the most fun ways to play Diablo is through seasons, so we're making the first one available soon after launch and building a dedicated team to bring you four seasons a year, each with a major new features, quest lines, enemies, legendary items, and more. Diablo 4 seasons are modeled after those of Diablo 3. When a new season begins, all of the characters from the previous seasons are moved to the Eternal Realm, where you can keep playing, leveling up and collecting loot. To play in the new season, you'll create a fresh character and experience a new seasonal features and contents while leveling up alongside other players. This, along with capping Paragon points in Diablo 4, ensures that your effort and skill, measured by both dexterity and theory crafting, determine how powerful your character becomes. And that's kind of one of the main points of Diablo, is just making your character as strong as possible. It also allows players who missed the last season to participate, this is good. This season design requires that all sources of character power comes from playing the game, so you will not be able to pay for power in Diablo 4. This is where they say that, obviously going from Diablo Immortal where you can do all of those things. Now we go to the new content part. We think it's important that players see that the game is changing in meaningful ways. Each season will be released with a fresh new gameplay feature and quest line that introduces new challenges, mysteries and possibilities into the level up experience. Alright, this is nice, especially if you can shake things up a little bit and make it more interesting. This will be, you know, good for the players themselves and, you know, provide a more reason that you go and play through the, you know, story itself or to level up a seasonal character itself. There is something players should begin to experience before the end of their first hour of play. One of the benefits of our seasonal direction is that it enables fun, new ways to play through your character's progression. Each season's new questline will reveal more of the world of Sanctuary and your character's place in it. Here we get the opportunity to introduce new characters or revisit old ones while exploring the lore and content of the season. Okay, so if they provide new content in that sense, that's definitely good, obviously, for the game itself. Refreshing the meta. Now, if you play Diablo, especially Diablo 3, usually you're going to have a meta build every single season, meaning that you're going to have a build for the character itself, for any class, which will be overpowered than anything else that you do. Obviously, this will help you go through rifts faster and be stronger as a character itself. And this is how they want to combat that. Diablo 4 is a vast game. We want to ensure that we are keeping existing content and features in a place where they remain fun and challenging to participate in. To that end, we will always be evaluating the state of the game to regularly revitalize old stomping grounds. This is good. One clear example here is looking at the relative balance between classes, builds and powers. Diablo is a game that is all about creating exciting overpowered builds, true, and while we don't want to balance the fun out of the experience, we don't want to create situations in which imprecise tuning squash creativity, yes this was actually a problem, especially for like Diablo 3. 
We will also be constantly adding new legendary and unique items, paragon boards, glyphs and more that will const continually refresh the meta and create new build opportunities. This is also fun, for example here we can see the paragon system and how is it going to be. Obviously I will be creating a video on that because I'm sure that people might find this confusing but here we have actually the strength, intelligence, willpower and dexterity along with the glyphs down below that we can use. So that's a plus. Improving the game. With each season, we'll be looking into ways to simply improve the player experience. As a live product, <laughs> I hate that word so much, we intend to hold Diablo 4 to an exceedingly high standard. We are here to build a live game that we can be proud of, and the best way to do it is by engaging our players directly. Based on feedback that we receive, the team will identify quality of life features and polish work that can be done to improve the overall game experience and invite the community to vote upon their priorities. Okay, if they, you know, if they include community in this, this should be, you know, something in a positive direction in that sense. I mean, there are some things that majority of people will find that it needs a change right away, and maybe the company has a difficult, you know, time to see which, which problem is the most important. So, if you do have this voting system in that sense, this can be positive for the game itself. Of course, this does mean that they release those updates on a regular basis as they say here. While we cannot always flip a switch to tackle something immediately, you can rest assured that we will be active in improving the quality of the game experience for years to come. This is true, I mean sometimes some fixes require a lot more time, but for as long as those fixes don't require a year to be implemented. Live events. Sanctuary is a living world filled with people, creatures and factions striving to meet their own ends. A tentative player should be on the lookout for new live events that will crop up each season. An example of a live event might be the warning of an impending invasion of the drowned, which may last a weekend, okay, so limited stuff, or the arrival of a strange peddler amongst the crags of dry steps. Uh, this is, you know, new items, new stuff you can kinda pick up. These events provide gateways to new adventures and unique rewards. Alongside our major seasonal releases, we see the return of Season Journey. Players are pushed to explore Sanctuary anew, earning limited time rewards with each chapter of the Season Journey that is completed. Completing the Season Journey is quite a feat, with the final step demanding the character overcome an extremely difficult encounter with an especially deadly foe. I like things which are difficult, especially because if you have a quest, or you have an achievement, or whatever, which requires a good amount of time and skill, you feel good in the end once you deserve it and you, like, equip it. That's cool. That's something I got used to from older games. With future seasons journey, we are regularly adding pinnacle level difficulty challenges for players to complete, pro proving their worth and earning unique cosmetic rewards besides. Like Diablo 3, the season journey is free for all players. Completing season journey objectives also grants progress towards a season pass, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that. A new feature with a battle pass style progression that advances alongside the season journey, enabling players to earn even more rewards by just playing. The Season Pass has both free rewards, cosmetics, premium currency and gameplay boosts, and paid rewards, cosmetics and premium currency only. And I mean, if you played any live service game, you kinda know what they're gonna be talking about. A Season Pass, a Battle Pass, however you want to call it, and basically the more you play, the more stuff you're going to unlock. There's going to be a few tiers, usually there are two, but sometimes there are three or more, where, you know, buying that gives you just more rewards as you play throughout it. And of course, if you go to a certain level, and for example, your free Battle Pass level is 60, and you buy it, it's going to unlock everything you have earned so far. So that's something which kind of became a standard today when it comes to, the, you know, these sort of games or any live service games in general. And now we go more directly into the Season Pass itself. As Keegan Clark, director of product for Diablo 4 says, this is what it says, Diablo 4 will be a full priced game with a cosmetic shop and Season Pass none of which will provide any pay for power options. Our goal in designing our in-game purchases is that we want to create beautiful things which add value to the player's experience of the game. Okay. 
The scale of Diablo 4 Seasons is much more ambitious than we've ever done in the past on Diablo 3. Good. With a large development team dedicated to Seasons after launch. Diablo 4 will be supported by an army of developers for years to come. I really want to see if this is going to be true. If yes, then cool. If not, then come on. With all of the exciting plans we have for Seasons, we want them to be enjoyed by everyone, regardless of whether they buy anything from the shop. I am grateful for the opportunity to finally share more with the community about our live service model. So the Seasons themselves will add new gameplay quest challenges and meta changes and quality of life improvements. The Season Pass recognizes players' dedication, with great rewards unlocking as you play more throughout the season itself. You know, the more you play, the more you're going to earn. There will be a single track of free rewards with free tiers that are unlocked by just playing the game and leveling, and premium tiers which provide no in-game power or advantages over other players. The free tiers of the pass will provide gameplay boosts to all players. Things which make the journey of leveling up fresh seasonal characters faster and more streamlined. In contrast, the premium tier rewards are focused on aesthetics, providing a huge value, 800%, in the form of cosmetics and premium currency. Many of the rewards embody the seasonal theme, helping players show off their participation in that season. And here is what you can expect. The Season Pass has free tiers and premium tiers, something we already talked about. The Season Pass awards cosmetic. Like the shop, these don't affect gameplay. Additionally, certain cosmetic types are exclusive to Season Pass, of course they are. The Season Pass awards premium currency that you can spend in the shop itself. And here they say on cosmetics only. The Season Pass awards free season boosts. Boosts accelerate players' progression for the duration of the season. For example, a season boost might accelerate XP earned to make leveling multiple characters within the season faster. Because they affect gameplay, season boosts are free rewards for all players. Okay, this is good. We want to be clear that players cannot unlock season boosts more quickly through purchases. There is no way to unlock more boosts or boosts at a faster pace by spending money. So basically what they say here, it's not Diablo Immortal. It's not going to be that. But at the same time, like whenever you say like, oh, you're gonna pop a potion or whatever, that can be done in a multiplier within the video game itself. You know, having a potion, all of that is kind of lame, but it is what it is at least it's going to be free for all players. As they say here, players can purchase tiers, but they won't speed up getting season boosts. Yeah, that's something basically you can buy every single unlock on the battle pass. It's been something that, you know, they've been using for a long time. Not just Blizzard, but every live service, you know, game. Players cannot upgrade season boosts just by purchasing tiers, because they also have to earn level milestones to apply them. That's good. All other tier rewards can be unlocked instantly by purchasing tiers. In other words, there is no way to shortcut getting season boosts by buying tiers. They must be earned. I love this, but at the same time, they're spending so much time to say that this is not Diablo Immortal. The season journey accelerates season pass progression. While any playstyle can progress through the season pass, min-max players can focus on season journey objectives to advance more quickly. Good. The way we approached designing the shop and the cosmetic within it was by thinking about experience we want players to have. We want buying things to feel good before, during and after purchase. <laughs> so if players choose to buy something it should be because they want to, not because they feel like they have to. Oh yeah, but there, there has to be some incentive. Every single time you design something you have to take into account incentive of course. That incentive can be if your skin is looking amazing and you just want to get it, you know, that's one incentive you can get. So if a player chooses to buy something, it should be because they want to, not because they feel like, oh, I have to, to FOMO in, basically. If it, should, it should also be clear to players exactly what they're getting before, you know, they choose to buy with no unpleasant surprises. The shop's cosmetics build on top of the foundation of a huge variety of transmog from weapons and armor players will find in the game. It's also important to us that the shop is grounded within Diablo's world, so our cosmetics are holistic fantasy, so you're not gonna be running around as a bunny. The inv individual components of which can be mixed and matched with transmogs from armors acquired in-game for endless customization options. So. If we can mix these things, at least that's good. I mean, one thing we definitely don't want is having a shop, buying a skin and then not being able to mix it with anything and it basically just a part of the full set itself. 
so this is cool of course here we have the character select shop obviously in the cosmetics like for example the lion of Ariat, Air to the Sea, Raid Lord, and so on and so on. Let's talk about what players can expect. The shop sells cosmetics for premium currency. I wonder what's the price going to be. Cosmetics give players even more options to customize the visual appearance of the character. Nothing offered in the shop grants a direct or indirect gameplay advantage. So while many of these may look like powerful pieces of gear, they have no in-game stats. <laughs> for example, this is the Raid Lord skin that you can get and it says here 666 uh I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if that's going to be the price it just it's probably just a placeholder until they decide what it is so we cannot account for this price to be that the shop is optional players can experience all core and seasonal gameplay features without spending money our goal is for players to enjoy going to the shop <laughs> Buy something when it catches their fancy and walk away happy with what they bought. And the shop is transparent, meaning you can fully like look at the skin, you know, turn it around, look at the little details, which, uh, you know, is, is alright. I mean, that's something you kind of have to put in and it's, it's something that also games have been doing here. Like, for example, this uh, skin looks, you know, it looks nice. It, it definitely looks nice. So, of course, it's going to incentivize you to pot potentially buy it. The best looking cosmetics are not exclusive to the shop. Diablo 4 will ship with hundreds of transmogs and lockable from drop in, you know, drop in items in the game, including dozens of armor sets of the highest visual quality. Of course it should be. There are incredible pieces, unique and legendary quality items for the players to find without ever going to the shop. Shop again. The shop offers more diversity of choices, not systematically better choices. That's subjective. I mean, here they, for example, provide three examples. On the left, we have legendary armor, which you can earn through the game, and the right is something you can buy from the shop. Look at this one, for example. It's subjective to say which one you like the most. I like the right more because it's more of that, you know, barbarian kind of vibe. While the left, I'm gonna be honest, it looks great, but at the same time, it looks like something you're gonna be wearing at level 35 in the game, pretty much. But again, this is, you know, subjective, who likes what. Same for these two as well, especially because um, this one on the left, for me, looks kinda cool. It kinda goes well with the character and on that side is nice, but on the right, we have another skin, which, you know, for some people might look better than the one on the left. Like, for example, even the... Venetian uh, three face mask or you have this uh, chaos orb I believe in in a path of exile like this mask itself It's very similar to that. That's kind of funny And of course here one we can see as well This one on the right is going to be from the shop the left one is going to be earned through playing the title again This is something you kind of like, you know, it's subjective. What do you like most? I like the right more. I don't know. It looks like Weaker than the left one, but at the same time, I like the vibes of the right one a lot. Armor transmog in the shop are usable on all characters of that class. So obviously, once you buy this one for the ranger, let's say, you can only use it for the ranger class because it wouldn't make sense on having this uh, set on a berserker or someone else. The most important guiding principle behind the shop and season pass is to create something players love, look forward to and appreciate being part of the game. Cosmetics in Diablo 4 create new ways of, uh, for players to express themselves and never provide advantages in game. <laughs> oh my god, they're trying to like, they're trying to say so much to you, this is not Diablo Immortal guys, this is not gonna be that. Players will experience all of the fun of the seasons whether they spend anything or not. Okay, fine. We intend to continue our dialogue with players about shop and season pass and we'll always listen and see community's feedback about it. It is our sincerest belief that we can work together with the community to keep Diablo 4 a living, evolving, uh, evolving world for many years to come. So my closing thoughts on this through everything we have read, is that this was a long-winded post, as I said, that they want to tell you that this is not going to be that predatory Diablo Immortal, which, honestly, you know, they have to say a lot of times, because some things can pass through the mobile market, but PC market, console market, people don't really like that all that much, but, you know, technically right now, every single live service game or any game 
just goes and works in that way. It started with free games having that and slowly but surely we're moving into fully priced games which also have that in the end so you just have to kind of deal with it. And there's a two reasons for that. Number one, it brings huge amounts of money. There is various data which shows that that microtransactions in general generate huge amounts of money for a developer. And second of all, you know why they do it? Because people spend money on it. It's a hard fact that people have to deal with people spend money on microtransactions it is what it is sadly but one thing which i do like if they stick with this obviously there has been multiple times where blizzard said something and in the end it turned out to be false and it turned out that yeah maybe we didn't really mean it in that way we can kind of you know navigate around it if this stays as is then it's okay it's enjoyable in some sense but the results themselves and the results of those updates and seasons and the looks in the game are going to be beneficial for that and i'm sure because i'm also going to be playing this i will be going through each transmog through each set to compare it from in-game to shop ones because i want to see how those shop ones are going to be and if they're going to be better in design and quality than the one you can earn in the game itself and it's also going to be important to see how many more armor pieces or sets they're gonna be adding for in-game meaning that new sets that you can find mix match in the game even if you don't spend money on it that's going to be an important thing because if each season you get a new set and the base game stays as is where you have a limited amount of those sets obviously you can transmog all of that mix and match it for various combinations but it's still going to be interesting to look at and i'm not going to lie i mean i will be playing this because i'm crazy about diablo and even though if it has this you know i'll play it but it's also good for the channel because it's content in the end but at the same time it just leaves a bad taste in the mouth and after diablo immortal i have a hard time trusting blizzard on this so hopefully this turns out the way it is because the core, core gameplay like the the gameplay we have seen on trailers i mean it looks fun and Hopefully it's not ruined by microtransactions and monetization options, but we'll see. But tell me down below, what do you think about all of this? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Are you okay with this? Are you not? Are you going to be buying this or not after these news? Let me down below. And also, huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. If you want to support the channel in an extra way, you can go to Patreon. Thank you so much for it. And also, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like and subscribe button for more. And visit us on Twitter and Discord. This is LKM signing out. Stay classy, everyone, and bye-bye.